Let's take a look at managing these zones and resource records on a Microsoft DNS server using PowerShell. So the only prerequisite besides PowerShell that is, is the, uh, the DNS server module. Uh, you can get that in the remote server admin tools or installing it through the roles and feature uh, wizard if you're on a server. And you can see that I've got that available to me here. So I'm actually, I'm actually working on my DNS server, which is also my domain controller. So the first thing we'll look at is getting the current zones on the server. So we've got the git DNS server zone commandlet. And if we run this without any parameters, this returns all the zones that are on the server that I'm currently running it on. So if you're working uh, from a workstation or a remote server and you need to get the zones on a remote DNS server, um, you use the same commandlet, but give it use the computer name parameter. So in this case, I'm giving it the name of my secondary DNS server. And you can see that there's, those are the zones that are running on my, my DNS01 server. And then if we wanted to look at just one specific zone, we can just use the get DNS server zone commandlet and give it the name of the zone. So that returns just that techsnipsdemo.org zone. All right, so to add a primary zone, we use the add DNS server primary zone commandlet and give it the name of the zone. So in this case, North America.techsnipsdemo.org. And then if it is an AD integrated zone, we use the replication scope parameter and tell it what scope to use. So in this case, force is what I'm going to specify. And the other options are domain legacy or custom. So I'm going to create that uh, primary zone. And if we want to create a, a file backed DNS zone, so one that is not AD integrated, we use the same command that so add DNS or primary zone, uh, give it a name, and then specify a zone file. Zone files should always have .dns as the file name extension. So I'm going to create that file backed zone. And then we can create a reverse lookup zone as well. On uh, this one, we just specify a network ID. Uh, so you don't have to give it a name because it generates that based off the network ID. And then this reverse lookup zone is going to be an AD integrated. So I've got replication scope there specified. You can also make it a file backed if you want. So I'm going to create that uh, reverse lookup zone. And then we can verify those zones using the git DNS server zone command that again. And so this time you can see we've got our new zones in there. So to create the secondary zones, I'm actually going to remote to my secondary DNS server. So I'm using the enter PS session commandlet. And so for this next little segment, I'm going to be running these commands all on my secondary DNS server. So to add a secondary zone, we use the add DNS server secondary zone commandlet. And I've got the parameters up above the commandlet. This is what's called a PowerShell splat. Uh, if you're not, not familiar with PowerShell splatting, we've got a great sip on it. Check it out. For the secondary zone, we specify a name. We give it the zone file because in this case, my secondary DNS server is not a domain controller, so it can't have any integrated zones. So I'm specifying a zone file. And then the master server's um, IP address. This, this is the IP address of the server that has the primary zone. So I'm going to create this secondary zone. And it takes a little longer than a primary zone because it's got to talk to the master server. And then for a reverse lookup zone, we can create a secondary zone for those as well. And then again, like the previous secondary zone, we specify the master server IP. Let's go ahead and create that. There you go. And then we can verify those zones using the get DNS server zone commandlet. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this remote, my remote DNS server. And we'll take a look at removing a zone. This is, this is really simple. We use the remove DNS server zone commandlet and give it the name of the zone that we want to remove. And if you don't want to be prompted, use the force parameter like I've got here. And then we can verify that zone is now gone using the get DNS server zone commandlet. So then let's take a look at adding resource records. So to add a resource record, we use the add DNS server resource record commandlet. And the first parameter there, that's the most important one. Then in this case, it's a dash A. That is because I'm creating an A record. So I'm giving you the name of WUG01, so my WhatsApp gold server. And then uh, it's telling what zone to put it in, and of course, the IP address of that server. So I'll go ahead and create that resource record. And then to create a CNAME record, uh, there's more options here. So I've got it set up in a splat, so it's easier to read. 
we just set CNAME equal to truth. So that's just like specifying dash A if you're just putting it all in one line instead of splatting it. Uh, and then give it the name. So in this case, uh, I'm specifying move it for my, uh, for where I've got move it installed. So this is the original host name that it's pointed to. And then, to, of course, tell what zone name. And I'm also specifying the uh, time to live uh, because in this case, I want to be a little different than the default. So I'll go ahead and create that CNAME record. And then for creating a, an MX record, uh, all we had to do is set MX to true, uh, give it a name. So in this case, just the, the base name, uh, tell it what zone, and then specify your mail exchange server, so your SMTP server. So in this case, I'm running an IMAIL server. So I've got an imail onetextsimsimo.org. And then we also need to specify a preference. So I've got that preference set to 10, pretty generic preference setting. So go ahead and create that uh, MX record. And then creating an SRV record, uh, we have quite a few options for these as well. So we're going to set SRV to true, give it a name. So in this case, the name is the service dot uh, protocol and the name, domain name. So th this is just one of the SRV records we need for 0365. Uh, and then I got priority weight, port, time to live, and then of course the zone name that you will be creating it in. So go ahead and create that SRV record. And then we can verify all these records using the get DNS server resource record commandlet and telling it what zone we want to look at. So this will return all of the resource records in the techsnipsdemo.org zone. So got quite a few of them. You can see the new ones here at the bottom. And if we scroll up, we can, of course, find our MX record, the SRV record we added. So to edit a resource record, this is where it gets a little tricky. So what we need to do is to first retrieve that resource record. So I'm going to use the get DNS server resource record, tell it what zone to retrieve the record out of, what the name of the record is, and of course the type. So this is, I'm actually specifying that SRV record we just created. And you can see that I'm assigning it to two different variables. This is important because we need to have both the original and the new one. So old is going to be the original. So new, uh, I'm going to make the change that I want to make to the new one. So I'm setting the time to live on the, uh, the new variable to be uh, one hour instead of 10 minutes. And then to change it, we use the set DNS server resource record. Um, and give it the new input object. So this is the new object. This is the changed object, the object that has the change that you want to make. Tell it what the old object is. So this is the object that does not have the changes. And of course, specify uh, what zone this change is happening in. I've also got the pass through uh, parameter at the end there, just so that it spits out or that object that we're changing. So you can see there's our, our new resource record with the new time to live. I did also want to mention there's a second way of making that change in case the first one doesn't work uh, because what it does, those objects reference each other so they don't aren't always actually uh, different objects or so sometimes referencing the same object there. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to get a, another resource record. So in this case, I'm getting my uh, what's up gold record. Uh, so I've got the Wuggle one as the name and the resource record type of A. And I'm assigning that to the old variable. And then I'm using the dot clone method on that old variable so that it creates a copy instead of referencing the original. And I'm assigning that to the new variable. And then on the new variable, I'm setting the IP address to be uh, the new and updated IP. So let's say I, I changed what's up gold to be a new IP address. So here's how you would do it. You, you reference the record data dot IPv4 address and then give it the new IP address. So I'll go ahead and do that there. And then we again use the set DNS server resource record and give it the new object. So that's our new again and the old object, the original one that's not changed. Tell it what zone. And if you want it to spit out like it did the last time, also had the pass through on the end of it. So we'll go ahead and make that change. So there is the new record and it does have that new IP address. Perfect. And then, of course, if we wanted to look at them all now, we can see that, that it still does have uh, that same address. So to remove a resource record, it's really simple. We just use the remove DNS server resource record commandlet. Give the name of the resource record that we want to remove, and of course, resource record type, and then specify what zone, it, zone it's in. And then if you don't want to be prompted, make sure and specify the forced parameter. And then we can verify that that record no longer exists using the get DNS server resource record again, and looking at that same zone. And yep, there we go. 
that record was removed. So that's how you manage uh, DNS zones and resource records on a Microsoft DNS server using PowerShell.